In this lecture, you'll learn about why we have BGP, the Border Gateway Protocol. Now, I know this is really obvious, but internet service providers do not have just one huge router that routes traffic between all of their customers. They've got many routers which connect all of their different physical locations. Those routers provide connectivity for customer traffic and also for the service provider's own internal traffic as well, between their own internal departments. Service providers, therefore, need to use an IGP, an interior gateway protocol, for the routing within their administrative domain. And in service providers, it's usually OSPF or ISIS which is used. And in large networks, you can find both OSPF and ISIS being used at the same time. So let's have a quick recap of how IGPs like OSPF and ISIS work, because we're going to compare this to how BGP works later in the section. So with an IGP, such as OSPF, the administrator in the example here enables OSPF on the router R1's interfaces. And R1 will then start sending out link local multicast addresses looking for other OSPF routers that it can form an adjacency with. So you see in the diagram here, R1 sends out an OSPF link local multicast hello, saying I'm an OSPF router. Is there anybody else on this link running OSPF? And for OSPF, that goes out on multicast address 224.0.0.5. The different IGPs use a different multicast address. In this instance, R2 does not have OSPF enabled yet. So it is going to drop that traffic because it's not listening for OSPF multicast traffic. And it's a link local multicast, meaning that R2 is not going to forward it out another interface. Then the administrator does enable OSPF on routers on router R2's interfaces. And R2 will start sending out multicast OSPF hellos out that interface as well. So it says, I'm an OSPF router. Is there anybody else on this link running OSPF? Again, it gets multicast 224.0.0.5. That will hit R1. And R1 says, hey, I'm running OSPF2. Let's check that our settings match. For example, they're both in the same area. And then we'll form an adjacency. The adjacency is formed and then the routers exchange routes. And in our autonomous system, which is in our administrative domain, we will enable OSPF on all of our routers. This is what the service provider are doing in their network in this example. So OSPF adjacency is formed between R1 and R2 and they exchange routes. The same between R2 and R3, R3 and R4. R4 and R5, and R5 and R1. So all of the routers will form an adjacency, they'll all exchange routes with each other, and pretty soon all of the routers will know the routes to get to everywhere inside that network. So IGPs learn the IP subnets that are available within an autonomous system within their domain, and they calculate the best paths between those IP subnets. And they do that based on the links between the individual physical routers. IGPs share information and make decisions, which is the best route, on a physical hop by physical hop basis. So from R1 to R2 to R3 and so on. All the routers in the RGP learn about all the best paths to get everywhere, physical router by physical router. And that's going to happen in our service provider network as well. They're going to be running an IGP within their network. So you see the example here, we've got New York up at the top left, Washington beneath, Boston in the top right, and Philadelphia in the bottom right. And in between those routers, the service provider have got their core routers. We're running an IGP, OSPF, or ISAS on all of those routers, and all the routers will learn the routes to everywhere else within that service provider. But the service provider doesn't just have its own internal traffic, it also needs to have customers so that it can make money. 
and those customers need public IP addresses to be able to communicate with each other. So let's look at how that public IP address allocation works next. The allocation of public IP addresses follows a hierarchical model. At the top of the tree is IANA. That's the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority. And they're responsible for global public IP address allocation. That then gets broken down into smaller regions. So IANA delegates allocations of IP address blocks to regional internet registries, RIRs. And each RIR allocates addresses for a different area of the world. For example, there's an RIR in North America, and so on. The RIRs then goes down to another lower level. They divide their allocated address pools into smaller blocks again and delegate them to internet service providers. And they can also be dedicated to another organization like a company at that level if the company is big enough to have their own block. And going down to the last level, internet service providers can allocate addresses to customers. That could be to companies. Also, you at home, you're going to get your public IP address from the internet service provider. So the internet service provider allocates blocks of public IP addresses to their customers. And you see in our example here, in the middle, we've got the service provider. They're running their IGP inside their network. Over on the left now, we've got customer one, and they're a medium-sized company. They're also running an IGP inside their network as well. And they want to have internet connectivity, so they connect to an internet service provider. We've also got another customer, customer two in our example. They're running their own IGP. They also want internet access, so they connect to the internet service provider as well. The customer on the left, customer one, they've got an IGP which controls all of their internal routes. If they're sending any traffic, which is not for internal, it's going out to the internet, they've only got one way to get out to the internet, so they're going to just use a default static route pointing to the service provider for all internet-bound traffic. And customer two are going to do the same thing as well. So at this point, the service provider knows the routes to all of their internal networks, they also know the routes to the public IP addresses for the customers because they allocated them. And the customers have got default static routes pointing out to the internet and IGPs for their own internal routes. So at this point, we have got connectivity between all internal private networks and also between all of the public networks as well. In the example, by the way, we're using NAT with private IP addresses on the inside for the customers. Okay, so again, going back a slide, at that point, we don't need BGP. We could just be running IGPs at the customers, IGP at the service provider, and default static routes at the customer out to the internet, and everything would work just fine. But we don't obviously just have one internet service provider in the world. There's lots of internet service providers. And all of the different service providers have got their own customers, and so that customers everywhere in the whole world can communicate with each other, the service providers need to have connectivity to each other. So they're going to appear with each other in internet exchanges, which are big data centers that allow them to connect in there. So in our example, service provider one, they've got their IGP and their customers. They're going to connect to service provider two, have also got their IGP and their customers. Service provider two are connecting to service provider three in our example. One is connected to four, four is connected to five, and five is connected to three. Now, this topology is just an example. In the real world, it's not like the service providers always connect to each other in a ring like this. You're going to have multiple service providers connected to other multiple different service providers. I'm just using this topology because it's going to be helpful for the examples that you're going to see later. Now, you saw that before when we just had the one service provider, an IGP would work for everything. But we're going to run into a problem as the network grows and we've got multiple different service providers. IGPs like OSPF and ISIS are not designed to support routing on the internet. It's not feasible to control routing for the entire planet on a physical hop 
by physical hop basis. We can't have every service provider knowing about all the different individual routers in the whole world. Obviously, that's just not going to work. So a different model needs to be used. And that's where BGP, the Border Gateway Protocol, comes in. BGP is the only EGP, Exterior Gateway Protocol, currently in use, and it controls routing on the internet. So there's lots of choices for an IGP within a company like EIGRP, OSPF, etc. But for routing on the internet, it's always BGP that is used. And with BGP, rather than sharing information and making decisions on a physical hop by physical hop or physical router by physical router basis, BGP works on an AS by AS basis, an autonomous system by autonomous system. I'll give you a definition of AS right at the start of the next lecture. Actually, right now. So an autonomous system is a portion of a large network, such as the internet, which is under a single administrative control. So that AS could be the network of a service provider, or it could be the network of a company. The point is that it is a single entity that is controlling the routing within that part of the network. The term autonomous system has also got another meaning. It's also used in EIGRP and BGP configuration to specify their scope. You remember when we covered EIGRP earlier, when we configured it, we configured an EIGRP AS number. And for routers to form an adjacency with each other, they had to be in the same AS. So our interior gateway protocols are used to share routes within an AS. And the ASs have a single coherent interior reaching routing plan, and they present a consistent picture of what destinations are reachable through it. So within a company's or an organization's network, they're going to be running an IGP, and all of the routers in that IGP know how to get to all of the other networks within that network. So that's how an IGP works within an AS. But for routing between different ASs, that's where we're going to use BGP. And when we do use BGP, the service providers each have a unique BGP AS number. So you've seen that I've overlaid this on the previous diagram. Each of those different service providers, SP1 to SP5, have now got an AS number. BGP is going to be aware of that AS number, and it's going to use it for routing traffic between the different service providers. And you'll find out about that in the next lecture.